Let's go ahead and start this video off with a cold start 2020 Chevrolet C8 convertible. 2015 C7 Z06. Today we're going to do a quick comparison between the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette C8 hardtop convertible and the 2015 C7 Z06. I've had this vehicle for the past week from Chevrolet as a press car. My father's owned this Z06 for the past four and a half years. I know this is not going to be an apples to apples comparison by any means, but I just mainly wanted to show a little comparison between the C8 and the C7. Again. This is the convertible, this is the Z06. It's the best I've gotten, it's what we're working with at the time. But I still think it'd be interesting, even though they're totally different specs, models, and colors. Still could get a little bit of a taste of a comparison between a C8 and a C7. So I'm gonna do a full walk around of them, then we'll hop inside, take a look at the interior. If you stay tuned to the end, we'll do a little bit of a rev battle between the two. If you enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like. And if you've not yet subscribed, be sure to subscribe. I have a full video review and drive of this vehicle linked down below, so be sure to watch that. We'll start here, take a look at the front of the two vehicles. Car is completely stock, has a Z51 package, 2LT. We've lowered it on the stock bolts. It's got the 3LZ package. Long beach red metallic tent coat on the C8. Arctic white on the C7. Natural interior on the C8. Got the red interior on the C7. Obviously on the C8, it's a mid-engine design, so our engine's gonna be back underneath this cover. On the C7, engines up front, 6.2 liter V8, producing 650 horsepower, 650 pound-foot of torque, supercharged, 495 horsepower, 470 pound-foot of torque with the Z51 package. But again, those numbers don't really mean anything. This is more so just a comparison between the two, but it is interesting to note. Engine up there, engine back here. Can't see the engine on this one, the convertible on the coupe. There's a glass panel that comes down. You can see the engine underneath that. And of course, on the C7, all we've got back here is trunk space. So speaking of, we'll go ahead and open that up for you, let you guys take a look at that. On the C7, the trunk is not separated from the front of the vehicle. We've got a large amount of trunk space you got a large amount of trunk space on the C8 as well. However, it's split between the front trunk and the rear trunk. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at those. It's a good amount of space split between the two. However, you, if you wanted to carry something really large and you need all of it in one place, you know, that's, that's the drawback with the mid-engine vehicle. But a great amount of space back here. I mean, big enough to fit an entire longboard back there. And I'll open up the front of the C8. I'm able to do all this from the key fob. Really deep compartment here. Ton of room. Really do like that. And of course, let's go ahead and take a look at the engine compartment here on the C7. I'll need to do that manually with the hood release underneath the front dash so get up in here i always have a little trouble finding it even though i've opened it so many times so i unfortunately won't be able to do this over on the c8 because all you can see is the heat shielding above the compartment here it's interesting though one kind of quick 
Uh, similarity I noticed is that th this heat extractor here is somewhat similar to the one on the hood of the C7. Not exactly by any means, but just kind of a similar to layout and obviously makes sense extracting the heat. This is a clean sheet build, so there's really no carryover from previous generations. So I'll give you one more look at the exterior, then we'll hop inside, take a look at the interior, and then lastly, again, we'll take a listen to both of these vehicles. We've got staggered 19 and 20 inch wheels on the C8. 19 and 20 inch wheels staggered on the C7 as well. And again, the ride height will be a bit different because this one is lowered a little bit on the stock bolts. And this one is completely normal ride height. Also, please disregard any dirt on either vehicle. We've been out driving them and it's been raining here in Nashville, unfortunately. So please disregard that. Normally we like to keep them very, very clean. So let's go ahead and hop inside, take a look at some of the interior comparisons. So it is worth noting we have removed the target top off of the C7 manually, place that in our garage, just put the top down regularly on the C8. So we'll start here in the C7, take a look at this interior, then we'll hop over and look at the C8. Got the 3LZ trim on this vehicle again. Big, big change, obviously, on the C8 is your engine's gonna be back here, so this will be separated. And we've got a speaker system and a wireless charging port for your phone on the C8. And another big change will take place here, so take note of the view here on the C7 with the steering wheel, the center console, do have a nice handle right there to hold on to. You don't have that in the C8. Actually, take a look here. Much larger door sill on the C7. Big Corvette logo, big letters, spell out Corvette. Fairly simple through the door panel here. Pretty simple on the C8 as well. So we'll just hop over here, take a look. From the passenger perspective on the C7, then we'll hop in the C8. Do like that spot right there. You can place your key here on the C7. Hopping in the C8. Much more slim and trim door sill there. Small Corvette logo, small letters on the word Stingray. Big change will be that steering wheel square circle design on the C8, as well as this full compartment down through here, giving you access to all the buttons for the driver and passenger air control. And there you go, that's what I was alluding to earlier, that speaker and wireless charger right there in the center, and no access back to the rear compartment, because that is where we have the engine. Infotainment system here is touchscreen, and it's not fully embedded into the front dash like it is on the C7. You can actually drop this down, pressing the screen button, it'll reveal a little bit of a hidden compartment behind there. But here it's molded into the dash. We'll come around, take a look at that from the passenger perspective, and you'll see it actually sticks out a little bit behind there, so it's not fully integrated in. Again, no place to put your key on the C8. I've been placing it over here in this side compartment of the door. And like I said, this is not an apples to apples comparison. I understand that, but we're working with what we've got, and I just kind of wanted to show you guys while I had the two in the garage. Really has been a blast driving this. My father bought this back in 2016 when I started the Drive 615 YouTube channel and we really, really enjoyed this vehicle. And it's been really fun not owning this, but having it for the past week, getting to review it, getting to drive it, getting to experience all that it has to offer. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
We'll take one more quick little look through here. Here's the startup on the C8. So full digital dash here. And this is very, very clean and crisp on this touch screen through here. And again, I love that digital display cluster through there. So here's a video of the interior startup on the C7Z. View of the display cluster here and the infotainment system. The biggest similarity in carryover between the two is gonna be this coupled to here, you're pushed to open that up on the C8 and it's gonna be exactly the same here on the C7, push to open that as well. So there you have it guys, let's go ahead and take a listen to the two of them. It's the idle of the C7. And the idle of the C8. Bonus footage for you in case you made it this far in the video. Key fob on the right is for a C8, key fob on the left is for a C7. We do have the convertible C8 as you guys saw. So you've got a few extra buttons on the key on the right to lower the top and then you also get the front trunk on that one as well. But everything else is the same as far as the remote start goes. It just gives you an indication on the C8 that you need to press it twice and you just hold it down on the C7. Let's go ahead and flip them over. And here's the reverse side of the key as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. If you've not yet subscribed, be sure to go ahead and subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and we'll see you guys in the next video.